So there were and good young. things. We'll talk about the good things on both shows. Swerve Strickland, Brian Danielson was awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into the argument about who won, who lost. But the match itself was great. No, Brian. No. Chris Jericho and Powerhouse Hobbs. I'll get back to that one. But that was great. That was right. No, Mike. Stop. <laughs> stop. Then we had, uh, what else was great? Uh, the Jay White Jay Hangman wasn't. match was really good. It was a good match. That was good. Yeah. People loved Karushita beating Soraya, yeah. even though I don't know why. We'll get to that later. Well. We have time. And then uh, Adam Copeland and Luchasaurus was a really good match. And, of course, Copeland won. And then we had the big beatdown and a giant battle royal afterwards. So we'll do a quick look at NXT and then talk about whatever segments you want to talk about after the break. Observer Live. All right. Well, then we had NXT. What was the best stuff on NXT? Well... I liked the pub brawl, See, but it was exactly dance. it was exactly what you would expect. It's just uh, they hit each other. I've never seen a pub that has a bowling alley in the pub. I've seen like a bar in a bowling alley, but this pub Man. brawl had bowling balls. That's a rough pub, bro. <laughs> it's, it's where JD Drake's hanging out. Let's see. We had uh, Ilya versus Dom was good, but it was not your normal Ilya Dragunov match. It was like, yeah. if, if you want to know what Ilya Dragunov is going to look like in 80% of his matches on the main roster, this is it. There will be exceptions. There will be people that want to go in there and tear it up with this guy. But this was just a basic kind of a... Well, both of these shows match. were filled with a lot of matches that had endings and sequences that were about other storytelling. So, I mean, that's... The one thing of but that overhung both of them because you think about like you know the page finish and all that and it's like you know again the match was good but the finish was what it was but it was you know a story to set up something else and then uh yeah main event braun breaker carmelo hayes it was a good match i mean the the, the key to nxt we like, didn't need a talking segment with them before that the thing know? with uh the thing with AEW is it was about putting on like let's put on some great matches and let's try to do some some angles people will talk about and NXT was really all about you know it's your your raw 30 or whatever it's like let's do a show that's all about my god who's going to show up at NXT tonight yeah. and you know we had everybody advertised but also like they brought out LA Knight and uh Shotzi drove out on our That L.A. Knight thing was like, it was hilarious. <laughs> like, they announced L.A. Knight literally as the hottest star in WWE today. That's how they announced him. <laughs> and he came out and he got like this massive pop. And then, and then he's supposed to be a ref. And he's there in like his Stone Cold Steve Austin outfit. He's got the jeans. He's Glasses. got a vest on. He's wearing his sunglasses. And he's just there. And I give the guy credit. He was a good ref. Like, he slid in. Great count. Like, some of these wrestlers don't know how to ref, which I never could figure out. Like, how do you not know how to ref? Like, so you have you a referee in every business? single match you've ever had. You talk to him before and after. Like, it's a, it's a group thing here. But he was a good ref. And then he beat up some dudes afterwards, and they liked that and all. Well, that was it. Then he was gone. I was like, oh, we got our L.A. Night moment there. I mean, do you do you think the top merch the seller in all of WWE right now? Do you know that? Yes, L.A. Yes. Knight. Well, yeah. uh, who else would it be? I mean, he is the hottest thing. They well, have you know, going John there Cena's right there now. and all. Well, that's true. Roman yeah, and Reigns. obviously, you still get the bloodline and all that stuff. But I mean, he is that hot right now, and they're taking advantage of it, and they're jumping on it at exactly the right time and perfect perfect for him i wondered though if that was what he thought he was going to do once he showed up there because i don't care how good he looked as a referee and yes he did look really good even though it was really ridiculous with him and his little round sunglasses doing the refereeing but i mean it could not have been easy to run around there and to like get in position in those tight pants but he did a pe- with a pair of timberlands on yeah he did fleet footed with timberlands on it was crazy so, anyway, yeah, I mean, you know... the still make lugs? Do another make lugs? difference, by the way, between these two shows. We just, like, we're not going to have time to do the full report, but another difference between the two no is... No lugs on uh, AEW. AEW did this show, uh, and when it was over, it's like, we, we, we know one match for Collision, and we know one match for next week's Dynamite. NXT was over, and I think we know four matches for next week's show, 
and multiple matches for the Halloween Havoc show. So it was very interesting that, like, you know, this is this is kind of AEW's thing lately is they're not always telling you a whole bunch of stuff for the next show. And, you know, I don't think it's like the end of the world or anything like that. But, I, you know, we have had people complain that are actually going to the show. It's like we had a guy in the chat last week. He was so mad. He was like, I don't even know why I'm going to Collision. I don't know anything that's on the show. Why am I even going? And that show did not do a great uh, attendance. But I do think that they need You're to. Go for uh, the initials, pal. They got to advertise more. They got to advertise. Because you know he's setting things up. You know what I'm saying? Like, all they did was shoot angles for the future. But then they announced, like, one thing. So, yeah, got to get stars hot too. I think they need to advertise that, more. Got to get well. You need to advertise. Yeah, old more, Yeti yes. pot pie here. Old Yeti pot, pot, pot pie. pie. The pot pie is back. Yeah, and I do think another thing that AEW needs to do when they're going to come to a town. Remember a while ago I was talking about how, dude, you got to do local promotion. You got it. Absolutely. Remember that, dude. Yes. They did a ton of local promotion in Seattle. They did a good job doing local promotion for Seattle, but you know they still didn't do all that great for a Collision. And the Collision show last week didn't do well at all. And, you know, one of the things that uh, the WWE does, and they did before they they went on this hot streak as well, is, listen, we don't know what the matches are going to be. We never do, okay? Because back then especially, it was like, you didn't even know what the matches were going to be for a Raw show because they'd announce four things and do none of them. Well, even then, if they were coming to town, they would at least say, these are the stars that are going to be wrestling on the show. You may not know who L.A. Knight is going to wrestle, but, man, if you buy your ticket, you're going to see L.A. Knight. You're going to see all of the Judgment Day. Like, they're going to get the word out about here are the guys that you're going to see. You know, AEW, they'll do a poster and, you know, they'll put some faces on it or whatever. But you should be telling people, don't know the card. That's fine. But you will see. Hangman Adam Page. You will see FTR. You will see the Young Bucks. And I think that that would help in terms of getting people into the building. I think they need to do more of that. There needs to be a new spin also on local guerrilla marketing. You know, it used to be before you could get in, there were multiple newspapers and free weeklies and and this and that, you know, there was the, the, the Washington City paper, City paper in Baltimore, you know, two different versions. And I'm sure there were the same everywhere. There were radio stations that were local, that were easy to go to and car dealerships. A lot of all of those businesses have now changed. How do you then go out there? There needs to be a little bit of a new spin on, how, OK, we may need to go to this town in waves. Get, be, get somebody get out there, you know, two or three people, three days out, blitz everybody, try to set up things. Again, I don't know what the answer is exactly, you know, other than you need big stars and you need them to be hot and you want people to go and see them, you know. But as far as like local promotion, it's easier to do it in big cities, but they got to figure out a way to do it to these towns where they should be selling out. Where did they go? Was it... uh was it like Greenwood, Mississippi one weekend and they were in, oh God, I forget where else, you know, on, on a Saturday and Sunday, like those places, whatever it is, should be sold out. Like if you're, it, to me, I don't know. You mean like I, this ding show in Kennewick? Yeah. 5,000 I mean, people in Kennewick. Yes. And that's, that's it. You could have done nine in Seattle, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but but still that's exactly what it is where you need to build those foundations and formations so you, look you have a wrapped crowd once you go back and people do know that that's the thing to see and, and it gets hyped up in the local papers and you do all that goodwill and all that stuff there's got to be a, a more attention put on that because Look, AEW needs to be as ground roots as possible. They have, at best, three-quarters of the audience that WWE does. If probably half the audience share that WWE truly can engulf. So how do you make yourself different? Your hardcore fans are going to be there for you. They're watching the TV. Obviously, 150,000 of them or so are paying for your pay-per-views every month. But it's not enough to be sustainable. You know, I don't... It's, uh... We'll never know. And it's a private business if he's ever turned a profit or not. But if you're going to run all these events, they got to turn a profit. 
And this uh, Kimmy here says, I still have not seen one thing advertising dynamite in Philadelphia. I knew it was I knew it was going to be there so I could get decent tickets because I was told straight from Aubrey Edwards. I think you need more than Aubrey Edwards telling people personally the show's yeah. coming to town. You know what you need? You need Aubrey Edwards right now, and it's let's say it's three weeks out to be like, you know, with some other people blitzing the area and laying some things out. And can we get to Channel 6? Can we get to this radio station? What can we do? And, and again, beat it. Send somebody there every week. These people are only on TV Wednesdays and Saturdays. Like somebody can go Thursday and Friday to a city that they're going to be coming up in, and that's all they're doing is selling nonsense stop i mean actually uh, this guy's got a great idea which is true he says uh um where to go here i lost it anyway his point was (laughs) you know the other thing that wwe used to do especially in the attitude era when they were doing like they were averaging twelve thousand people per show it was like incredible numbers all the time is forget about the rest of the show the main event will be stone cold steve austin versus the rock and it wasn't going to be on tv It was just the post-show dark match match. with two massive stars. And, you know, uh, you don't know what's going to be on the the show, but my God, you're going to get to see this. And that's it's literally like, you know, I've told this story a thousand times. I went to a WWF house show in like 1988, okay? 89, something like that. And, you know, it's just a show or whatever. I had fun. I was a kid. And then during intermission, they, they come on the mic and they go, we will be coming back to the Seattle Center Coliseum on March 18th, and you will see the earthquake mm-hmm. versus Hulk Hogan. And, dude, I swear to God, grown men, they, like, jumped out of their seats, and they start sprinting because you had to go to the box office back then. They're freaking sprinting to the box office to buy back. tickets so they could come back and see the match. Now, the key is it's a match you never see on television. That's the way the business was in those days. Now, obviously, it's different nowadays. It's a TV business. But, but, Young Bucks versus FTR. Hangman Page versus Swerve Strickland. MJF versus Chris Jericho. Whatever. Even though MJF's not going to work out shows. Giant matches that you're not going to see anytime soon. But you know what? If you go live, you're going to see it. You're going to see that match live. If you buy your ticket for Collision, it ain't going to be on TV. But man, you can go to Collision, and after the TV show is over, you're going to see Edge versus Christian. Adam Copeland, sorry. Some huge match. That stuff has always worked. And so that's something that you can advertise because it doesn't matter what your storylines are. You're going to see this giant match that you can't see anywhere else. And then Anthony Bowens starts talking about Mr. Ass. He's in tears, talking about Mr. Ass. One more time, he says, from your couch at home, scissor me, daddy ass. I wish they would have said something like, we called him on the ass phone. Remember how Gorilla Monsoon had the banana phone? Yeah. I just imagine a phone, an ass phone that they used to call Billy I'm going to regret this Google search. (laughs) (laughs) For an article on Vice from April of 2016. <clears throat> the secret world of tiny phones that go inside your butt. Oh, really? Well, that's that's not quite what I was expecting. Nor, wait a second. There's an article on this. Can you can you send me this article? Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Now, if you told me, Craig, please. What are we talking about? I don't know. Pressing or something. Okay. Collision. Collision. House of Black versus Darius Martin in action <laughs> and Teddy and Lee Johnson. That's where you keep the phone. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, guys. Did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.